Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got a free tiger today. I got this from AliExpress. This is the FT-118. It's got pretty good action and it's pretty budget friendly. Free Tiger's got their own website now. It's ftknives.com and I think I've got my affiliate stuff set up correctly. Maybe I don't, I don't know, but this thing's $23.99 US. That's pretty good for Americans. Uh, I doubt it's gonna be safe for Canadians to import this directly from FT Knives. I haven't even double checked to see if it's possible. Maybe it is. I get my knives mostly sent to a friend in Nebraska and then he gets them up to me. But uh, this knife's pretty cool. G10 inset liners, uh, D2 steel, bull nose-ish kind of tip to this. Uh, long straight section here and then the tip's not really made for piercing, but Hey, it's a pretty nice knife, right hand only pocket clip, but it's got some pretty smooth action. For 24 bucks, I think you're gonna to wanna to watch this video, so stick around. You just saw one of the cons, and I'll talk about that and the others right now. All right, so here it is. It comes in, I think, three colors. This green, black, and Here's a picture of the three different colors that you can get. It's a fairly light, small knife. This thing's just under three and a half ounces. Like I said, D2 steel. And look at that blade. We've got a long straight section there. Sort of a, like I said, a bull nose-ish. Bull no Why can't I say bull nose-ish? I don't know. And if you look closely, you're going to see scratch marks right here. And uh, I don't think they were there in the unboxing. For some reason, the steel, it scratches up pretty easily. I wasn't cutting anything like any metal or anything, at least not that I was aware of. I think that happened when I was cutting through a bunch of cardboard in my testing. So I'm not sure why. It's got those lines that are sort of parallel with this edge right there that are scratch marks. Same thing on this side a little bit. It's one of the few knives that I can say got scratched up during uh, my testing, but it happened. We've got a swedge that's most of the length of the blade. It sort of ends just before the tip. Uh, we've got the uh, vertical grind lines on there. The badging is not too terribly big. And on this side, we've got a big D2 right there. At least it's up here on the flats where I prefer instead of on the bevel. So if that Free Tiger logo could have got put up here on the flat, I would have preferred that too. So the sharpening, the sharpening is not as terrible as most knives are that I review. So they did a little better job sharpening than most knives. Of course, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. The sharpness choil, it's just done ideal. I really like the sharpness choil. It's complete. It, it terminates before the plunge terminates or right at where the plunge terminates. So it's big enough to be useful, but not so big that it's an annoying thing. And uh, that's pretty much it for that part of the blade. Take a look at that. We've got just four little lines milled in there for jimping. I wish it would have come out like maybe twice as far or at least 50% further, two more lines milled in there. It does offer grip on the thumb, you know, but I wish it was more because when I'm on here, you know, the jimping is at that part of my thumb and I'd like it to be over most of the pad of my thumb just to offer a little bit more grip. Not bad. Uh, the spine is chamfered here as well. Pretty good. What about this flipper? Well, it's a tiny flipper, look at that. And it's smooth, there's no jimping on it. And so I found quite often my finger would just slip over it unless I was paying attention. So when you're paying attention, it's easy to operate this knife, works just fine. But if you're not paying attention, it's easy just to slip your finger over that. So just be aware of that. But the action's quite nice. The uh, detent is dialed in. So, you know, if you shake the knife, the blade doesn't come out. That's quite good. Lock up. Look at that lock up. It's almost exactly what you want to see. It's a little bit past where I'd like. So it's a little bit closer to the midline than I'd like. But at least it's fully engaged. There's no blade play up and down. There's a little bit side to side. And that's because this has come loose during my testing. And uh, let's snug that up just a little bit. And 
it's free spinning. I just, I hadn't tried to tighten it up yet, so I just found out we've got a free spinning pivot, so it's going to be a little harder to tighten that up than you want. Am I going to be able to get that off? That's a bigger question, because there's nothing on here to grip it. I don't like free spinning pivots, and maybe I should have checked that before I started my video, but I tend to want to take my knives apart for the first time on camera when I'm doing the review, so... That's another con that I hadn't written down yet, that we've got a fully free spinning pivot. We'll see if that's a problem. Back to the lockup. There's the uh, lock release. There's a bit of a chamfer on there, but it's sitting up far enough that it's easy to get your thumb in there to disengage that lock. I know the angle's a bit odd compared to what I'm used to having. I still haven't fixed my uh, gantry. Well, it's not really a gantry, but my system for doing overhead camera. But I'm a little closer to straight up and down now than I was before. So lockup's okay. Got a big chamfer here and a big chamfer here so that when you're gripping the knife, it's fairly comfortable in hand at the index finger. And it's chamfered all the way around the handle. Uh, like I said in the intro, the liners are completely inset. So you can't see the edge of the liners except for right there at the lockup. That's neither here nor there for me. I don't mind. I don't prefer that, but I don't dislike that either. The uh, G10 slab, it's got pretty good texture on it, so it offers pretty good grip. We come back here and we've got a little backspacer. We've got T6 inset button screws, which if you've been following my channel for a long time, you know how much I dislike that, but there they are. We've got a weirdly shaped lanyard hole and it's got crisp edges. It's a little small for paracord to get through there just right. You have to make sure if, when you melt the end of your paracord to you know melt it sort of in that shape so that you can push it through. But it works. I wish they would have chamfered the edges though because it's a little bit crisp at this edge and it's going to start to cause the paracord to fray a little bit. We've got button screws at T6 again on the pocket clip and I've not checked any of these to see if they're really soft or they're going to strip out. We'll find that in just a minute. What I am a little concerned about is this pocket clip. Look how thin those, that, it's almost like a wire there, just on both sides, really thin. I think that steel is going to fatigue easily and it's not a strong clip. It's not holding on really tight. So I think there's a good chance that that pocket clip is going to break right there. How comfortable does it feel in hand? I already went over that a little bit. It's okay. You can cut with this. It slices okay. The belly over here on this big rounded tip right there, that's actually useful having a round belly there for slicing into things. And it cuts fairly well. Now, let's take this thing apart. I took one screw out already. These screws do not have Loctite on them, so they are coming apart without having to use any drive grip or anything, so that's quite good. But I'm not able to get this pivot screw out loose. You know, it's so smooth back there. I'm just not able to get that to come loose. So I think I'm going to have to destroy this knife and uh, take my Dremel and try to cut a slot in there. I'm probably going to get into that anodized ring. Oh, I didn't mention that, did I? We got that anodized orange ring around there. But I'm probably going to have to destroy that to get this to come apart. I cleaned it with some denatured alcohol, and then I put a nice blob of hot glue on there. So the first thing to try is just, you know, put my thumb on there, see if I can get this to loosen up. No, it just wants to spin freely. So the next thing to try is I'll get some pliers. I just have some tape on them. And I'm just going to try to hold it gently in my hand, kind of like this. and see if I can stop it from spinning, if that glue can hold on. Just try to be gentle. Nope, the glue broke off. So what I did was I put this in some boiling water to try to break the uh, Loctite on there, put another big glob of hot glue on there, put it onto the uh, G10 as well to help it not spin around. And I'll try to push really hard with my thumb. No. It doesn't want to come loose. I'm pressing as hard as I can. I'm sorry I had to do it off camera because I just can't, can't get it on camera. 
Yeah, that's just spinning freely under there. So yeah, I'm going to have to do the bad thing and put a line in there with my Dremel. I tried not to touch the pivot collar, but I nicked it. So now I'm going to clamp it in a vise and take it apart. Put a flat driver in there. That is tight. That's even after boiling it. They put a lot of Loctite in there. Well, I'll have to do it off camera. I don't think I can do it here without making a sudden movement. I don't want to hit my camera. Okay, so let me show you what I got so far. There's the screw that I took off. It doesn't look that well done with the Dremel. I'll try to clean that up with a file and make it look a little bit nicer. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Here's the blade. There is just a little bit of rust down in that plunge. Just a tiny bit of superficial rust. No skeletonizing. That's just the way it goes. Here's a little backspacer that was in here. Put that on there. And there's the screws. We've got stainless steel ball bearings. And yeah, the aluminum. I do have two little notches in it. I just couldn't uh, get that through without it. I did cut up the G10 just a tiny bit right there. There's just no excuse for using a bunch of Loctite and a free spinning screw. But that's sometimes what you get on the really cheap brands. It's just the way it is. I'll, I'll clean it up, put it back together again. So now I put it all back together again. Before we go over the sizes and stuff, let me say, I forgot to say something earlier in the video. I have learned a short while after I ordered this knife, I learned that Free Tiger, well, I figured out that Free Tiger is a, what I call a rebrander brand. That's a brand where there's a company that makes a whole bunch of knives and they'll put whoever's brand on there that wants to put their brand on there. So you'll find the exact same knives that Free Tiger has made by other brand names done exactly the same way with the exact same color schemes rebrander and i really don't like rebrander knives because they tend to be garbage and this pivot really does is frustrating and when i took the knife apart and put it back together again uh, the screws i did find they're fairly soft thankfully they didn't use loctite in here so it's not hard to take it apart and put it back together again but when you tighten it up you have a tendency to strip the screws because most people tend to over tighten. So be careful with these screws. Use something like drive grip. anti cam -out fluid of any type is going to be your friend with these cheap kind of knives, especially with T6 screws. So that is the knife in summary. What's my summary on this thing? Well, the long and short of it is I don't like this knife. It's done okay. If it would have had a just even just two screw heads, one screw head on either side, I would have given it a pass. But because it's a free spinning pivot with a blank face on one side so that you can't take it apart unless you destroy the knife. Well, it's not destroyed, but deface the knife. I don't like that because now that's ugly. How can I sell this on one of my knife sales? You know, it sells for 24. I'd be lucky if I get 12 bucks for this thing. Who's going to pay more than that for this? You know, it got scratched up near the tip of the blade on both sides. And I had to cut up this whole area here. I didn't even take the time to make it look nice because it's not worth taking the time to make this look really nice. So, yeah, action's good, though. Like, they did a good job with that. Flipper's a little bit small. Alignment's good. Uh, easy enough to get in there to disengage the lock. It is a right side only pocket clip and the pocket clip is quite weak because of how thin that is right there. That's just those wires. Well, it's, it's not really wire, but it looks like wire because of how thin it is. That's not very strong. Oh, I didn't show how well it goes into a pocket. Let me show you that. Okay, so there you go. Goes into a pocket. No problem. There's lots of spare room there. So it's functional, but yeah, I can really feel how weak that is there. They could have made it with that pocket clip sitting a little closer to the handle, but 
most of all, most of all, that pocket clip is weak there. So it's got pros. It's definitely got cons. The D2 steel, it corrodes pretty easily. So there you go. What do you think of this knife? Would you buy one of these? Would you pay full price for it? I wouldn't. Not again. So thanks again to my supporters. You guys are awesome. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.